Hello everyone, grace and peace be multiplied to you from God the Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. There's a word from the Lord today. And this Sabbath day I would like to draw your attention to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. And I'll be looking at just two verses. 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 6 and 7. Verse 6 and 7. So when you find it, you can read along with me. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It reads like this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let's just have a word of prayer before we get into this word. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray even now that as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear what you would have to say to us, that you will speak, Lord, as we listen. As for me, your preacher, hide me behind the cross, dear God. We pray that this word will make the difference in someone's life today who is bogged down and bothered by different challenges, dear Father, different worries and concerns that you're going through. Speak, dear Lord, as we listen. In Christ's name, amen. So Vic Ab and Rostern churches, the title for today's message is simply this. Don't worry about a thing. Don't worry about a thing. Since the outbreak of this COVID-19 pandemic in the world, people everywhere are all asking the same question. When will this thing end? When will it come to an end? When will things get back to normal? Will it ever get back to normal? What will the new normal look like? Beloved, when it's not issues pertaining to that question, and as we notice even in India, the rising death toll, our, the, our attentions are drawn away in the Middle East, where we find the, the, the Palestinians sending rockets over on Israel and Israel sending missiles and rockets over in Palestine. And, and, and when it's not that, it is our own personal painful predicaments. It's your health. It, it, it's your children. It's your finances. Or, or maybe like myself and my family currently, maybe you're in transition. You're in that place where you're moving from one province to another, moving from one location to another. And all these things are high stressors that can cause us to be tortured by the weariness of worry. None of us, church family, are aloof to the weariness that worry brings. Currently, like I said, we are in the process of moving from here in Nova Scotia to, Sask to Saskatchewan. And when you're in the process of moving, as you know, there are some things in your house that are no longer in the same place. Things that you know used to be in one corner is no longer there. And yesterday, my wife and I, we got so frustrated and fed up and furious because she was looking for an important item so that she could work and we could not find the item. We searched all over. We look high and low and we still couldn't find that item. And after an hour or so of searching, she looked at me and she said, I am frustrated. I just can't find this thing. This thing is stressing me out. And just like that, Amber, just like that, worry was knocking at the door of our minds. But why is this so? 
Sister Atta, why is this so? Why do we worry so much about things which we do not have any control over? Almost 500 years ago, Michel de Montaigne was known as one of the most significant philosophers within the French Renaissance era, mainly for his writing. And, and, and he was known and even remembered for one of his most famous statements on the subject of worry. Uh, Michel de Montaigne says this, My life has been full of terrible misfortunes, most of which never happen. Mm -mm -mm. My life has been full of terrible misfortunes, most of which never happen. Have you ever been there? Karen, have you ever had that feeling of uncertainty, dread, or fear, which in many cases can lead to sleepless nights? Just to find out that some of the things we worry about never come to pass. <laughs> Elsie, some of the things we worry about never come to pass. But beloved, if you are currently dealing with worry in your life. This was the issue or one of the issues Paul addressed in his letter to the Philippians. Paul writes to them to address the subject of worry. The saints were worried about Paul's welfare and well-being. Remember, Paul was in prison. He was on death row. No one knew when was going to be the last. They would see Paul or hear from Paul or get a letter from Paul. And so there were many concerns they had for Paul, his welfare, his well-being. And Paul, in this letter, before he ended this letter, Paul put this in, in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Put simply, stop worrying. In the Greek, it's a, it's a command. Paul said, don't be anxious. Stop being anxious. Stop worrying. Well, Otto... I have a question for Paul. If he was right here, I would say to Paul, how can you say this to me, Paul? How can you tell me to stop worrying when you don't know the intricacy of my circumstances and situation? How dare you, Paul? What gives you the audacity to tell me to stop worrying? Claudine, if Paul was here, I would ask him that question. And so when I was reading this, I had a little issue with Paul. But, but, but then I remember this is coming from Paul. What do I mean by this? This is coming from Paul. If there was ever anyone who could tell us to stop worrying, it's Paul. Paul had been through a lot. Paul had been through hell and high waters. Paul had faced so many challenges and perplexities in his life. And Paul is saying, listen... I don't know what you're going through, but let me tell you what I've been through. And what I've been through, I didn't allow it to cause me to be wearied down by worry. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 to 26 to 28, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 to 28, Paul said, listen, let me tell you what I've been through. Let me tell you, Monique, what I've been through, and I did not allow it. To wear me down with worry. Paul says five times. Listen Lindley. Five times have I received at the hands of the Jews. Forty lashes less one. Three times have I been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I spent adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in dangers from rivers. Dangers from robbers. Dangers from my own people, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, <laughs> in toil and hardship, th through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, and often without food, in cold and in exposure. And then verse 28, Paul said, and apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me by the concerns that I have for all the churches. Lindy, Paul said, listen, I've been through all of this. 
But I did not allow it to wear me down with worry. But why is this so? The question still lingers. The question still lingers, Sharon. Why do we worry so much? Sean, why do we worry so much? I'm not the smartest here, but I believe, Krishna, I believe that we worry because we see the solution to the problem as coming from us and not of God. Let, let me give it to you again, Elder Jason. We worry because we see the solution to our problem as coming from us and not from God. But beloved, to do this is to say that God I trust you, but I'm not, I don't trust you enough to handle this. We don't say this consciously or directly, but our attitude or our posture is saying this. God, I don't trust you to handle this, so I got to figure this thing out on my own. And so in writing, Paul wanted the saints in Philippi and us today to know what we should do with our worry. So in verse 6 of Philippians chapter 4, Paul's first recommendation is this. He said, stop being anxious about anything. He said, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. There it is. The first thing Paul says is prayer. Now, this word anxious, a better translation could be being overly concerned. So Paul is saying, stop being overly concerned about everything, but by prayer, that's it, prayer. Prayer. The first thing Paul recommends is prayer. Paul said the thing that wakes you up from sleep, the thing that you think about lastly before you go to your bed, that thing which is buffeting your mind, you need to pray about it. <laughs> and whether we believe it or not, being overly concerned about things can become a stumbling block in our walk with God. To simply put, Vonique, worry is inconsistent with trusting in God. The more we worry, the more we're saying, God, I don't trust you to handle it. And guess what? Satan knows this. And as a result, Satan used worry and anxiety at times as tools to get us into the place and space where we think it's up to us to fight, to figure it out and fix it on our own. And in so doing, listen carefully, in so doing, gradually we naturally diminish our trust and dependence on God. Mm. Let's let this soak in for a bit. And I'm, I'm, this is a word for me, beloved. <laughs> this is a word for me as well. The truth is, the things we pray about are the things which we're trusting God to handle. Joanne. The things we pray about constantly are the things we're saying, God, if you don't come true for me in this, it's not going to work. And the things we pray little about or don't pray about are the things we are saying, I could figure this one out on my own. I got this. <laughs> but Paul's first solution for somebody today who knows what it's like to be buffeted by worry, to know what it's like to miss sleep because you're sitting up trying to figure out this situation on your own. Paul says that we should pray to God. Let prayer be your first priority when you're faced with a predicament. Let prayer be your first priority when you're faced with a predicament. Don't worry about anything. Trust God with everything. When we get frustrated because we're trying to figure things out on our own, and we, and we do this in our own strength, and we exhaust ourselves, every now and then we say, 
I guess I best pray about it. <laughs> Beloved, prayer should be our first priority. So the next time that you're tempted to take matters in your own hands, the next time that you feel like I need to call the pastor first, the next time you feel that you need to call Elder Barry or Elder Jason, listen, listen carefully. Let us heed to what the songwriter said. He said the first thing we should do, beloved, we should have a little talk with Jesus and let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. Yes, beloved, and he will answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer will turn in and you will know a little fire is burning, you will find out that having a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Ellen White. In the book Steps of Christ, page 93, paragraph 2 says this, Prayer is opening the heart to God as to a friend, not that it is necessary in order to, not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are going through, but in order to enable us to receive Him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but it brings us up to Him. Don't worry about anything. Trust God with everything. So secondly, secondly, Paul said in, we're still in verse 6. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer, second thing, supplication. Now, what is the difference between prayer and supplication? Is there a difference, Crystal, between prayer and supplication? I, I believe there's a difference. Prayer is more generic. Prayer is, as again, as Ellen White said, it's like talking to God as you with a friend. Just talking to God, and that could be audibly, that could be in thoughts. That could be when your head is on your pillow. But supplication now is when you're specific. Supplication is when you, you, you focus and channel your prayer about a particular thing person or situation. It means telling God specifically what's on your mind. You see, God invites us, beloved, to come to Him with all our cares and concerns. Listen, from the greatest to what we would deem as the least, God wants for us to come to Him with all our cares. As a matter of fact, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, cast all your cares and anxieties on him because he cares for us. Now, Peter didn't say cast some of your cares or cast the small cares or the big. He said cast all your cares, your financial cares, your health cares, all cares on him because he cares for us. This word cast in the Greek, it's, it, it gives the imagery of a mason back in the days, mixing up the, the plaster. And then his goal is to toss it on the wall with force. An accurate word would be fling. Can you imagine him mixing up that concrete and, and his goal is to fling it on that wall for it to stick permanently. What Peter is saying here is that we should fling our cares and concerns on Jesus and let it stick. Don't fling it on him. And then take it back from him. No, 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 don't, don't do that. The goal is to fling it on him and let it stick permanently. Remember I tell you, um, a few days ago when we were trying to find this item, we were exhausted. We were stressed. We were getting concerned. And in the midst of that, a little prompting said, hey, pray about it. It's like, all right, let's pray about it. We prayed about it. We said, God, bring to our attention where this thing is. Bring to our mind where this thing is. And a few moments after prayer, I asked my wife, I said, when was the last time you saw this thing? She said, you know, I was using it down in the basement. And I said, you know what? Let me go down in the basement, go check for it. Now, I'd been in the basement more than once looking for it. But just as I entered the basement, a thought entered my mind. Look here. I've never looked in that place before. And there it was. The hard drive, that's what we were looking for. A hard drive that has all of our work on it. Beloved, we could have remained in a state and a place of frustration, being fed up and furious. When we prayed, God, bring to our attention 
how to ask the right question <laughs> so that we could find where this thing was. Beloved, I'm encouraging you, Paul is encouraging you that we should pray about the things which are causing us stress, strain, and struggle. The truth is, beloved, the things we pray about are the things we want God's intervention on. And what we do not pray about are the things we are saying to ourselves, we can handle this. And so thirdly, Paul said, do not be anxious about anything. Watch this now, by prayer, firstly, and supplication, and then thirdly, with thanksgiving. The truth is, when we get fixated on our situation, we tend not to see beyond what is before us. And thus, most of the time, if we are not careful, our prayers will end with supplication. God, fix this for me. God, move this for me. God, do this for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Most of the times, our prayers, if we are not careful, will end with supplication. But Paul is saying to us here that we need to go beyond supplication. We need to go to thanksgiving. Because we will be reassured that God is a way maker. Because we will see how God is able to do what we are asking him for. And by faith, we are thanking him in advance. That is the goal of thanksgiving, thanking God in advance. Now, to be practical, some of us find it difficult, and I find it difficult at times when today, for example, is Monday, and I'm praying about something that should happen on Wednesday. It's hard to give God thanks for Wednesday when you're in Monday. But the truth is, we don't always have to even give thanks to God in that way. We can also give God thanks for what He did. Saturday and Sunday and though we are standing here Monday and praying about Wednesday we can say God listen you did this for me Sunday you came through for me Saturday and you who came through for me those days I am certain that you are still able to come through to make a way to work it out for me Wednesday Thanksgiving in thanksgiving, beloved friends, our, our faith is strengthened because we are reminded of the goodness and the grace of God that He has manifested in our lives. When we trust in God and not ourselves, we in return, beloved friends, can experience His peace. We can thank Him in advance and experience His peace. Ellen White said in the book, Last Day's Events, page 72, paragraph 1, she said, We have nothing to fear for the future, except as we, should, as, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and His teaching in our past history. We have nothing to fear for the future, paraphrasing, lest we forget how God has led us in the past. So Paul said, God wants to give us, this is the big point of the message now, Jason. Paul, Paul said, God wants to give us something in exchange when we give him our worry. And the avenue in which we give God our worries and our anxieties and our cares through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Paul says, when we give God our worries and woes and concerns, He in return will give us shalom, His peace. Verse 7 said, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. M.R. Vincent in his Bible commentary said, peace, listen carefully, peace is the fruit of believing prayer. What this means is that when we pray, the sign that suggests, Sister Lenora, the sign that suggests that we're trusting God with the situation, that we have surrendered it to God, is peace. Having peace in our hearts. Do not worry about anything. Trust God with everything. This peace, beloved friends, that Paul mentioned here is a peace that excels knowledge. This peace you cannot get from human companionship. This peace you can get from your pension. This peace you can get from living in a mansion. This peace cannot be bought with money. This peace, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 tells us that this peace is a person. This peace 
is Christ. John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. This peace is Jesus. It is this peace <laughs> that caused Daniel to sleep in the lion's den. It is this peace that caused the Hebrew boys to walk up and down in the midst of a fiery furnace without getting burned. It is this peace, uh, beloved, that Jesus spoke to the storm when he said, Peace be still. Paul said this Peace will guard, military word, will guard your hearts and minds from anxiety, from worries, because you are trusting God to handle the situation. Don't worry about a thing, because God's peace is on guard. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have made provision for us to experience this peace which surpasses all understanding. Lord, I pray that you will give us the will and the desire to pray and to give you the anxiety, the worries, so that we can have better quality sleep, so that we can enjoy our day trusting in you, knowing that you've got this you are in control we want to experience this peace and we are so grateful that you have already made provision for us to experience the peace of christ may we enter this peace we pray in jesus name amen